Welcome to Shook Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here. Um, I apologize for that. I am supposed to slow down. I have been reprimanded by audience members that are not from the United States. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another writer's quote. Uh, and our writer's quote this time comes to us, not from Ernest Hemingway, surprise, but from uh, Papa himself, our Lord and Savior, Ernest Hemingway. Uh, and this comes to us from page 51 of Ernest Hemingway on Writing, edited by Larry W. Phillips. When you start to write, you get all the kicks and the reader gets none. So you might as well use a typewriter because it is that much easier and you enjoy it that much more. After you learn to write, your whole object is to convey everything, every sensation, sight, feeling, place, and emotion to the reader. To do this, you have to work over what you write. If you write with a pencil, you get three different sights at it to see if the reader is getting what you want him to. First, when you read it over. Then, when it is typed, you get another chance to improve it. And again, with the proof. Writing it first in pencil gives you one-third more chance to improve it. That is 333, which is a damn good average for a hitter. It also keeps it fluid longer so that you can write it b easier. So you can, so you can better it easier. Uh, and the very first thing to point out with this quote from Ernest Hemingway on writing is <laughs> the little jab that might go unnoticed the first time you read this quote. When you start to write, you get all the kick and the reader gets none. So you might as well use a typewriter because it is that much easier and you enjoy it that much more. After you learn to write, insinuating that everything you write at first is not even worth rewriting, is not even worth editing, because it will be throwaway. There will be nothing there. And from my personal experience, it's pretty true. I had, when I very first got serious about writing, writing was always something that I considered myself um, a practicer of, a practitioner thereof. But when I finally, when I finally realized that it was something that I cannot do without, that it is something that centers me, that grounds me, that puts me back in my place, back on base if we're allowed to stay with the uh, baseball metaphor. I organized a writer's group and we met weekly. We met 13 times during a summer and had 10 stories apiece. For years I edited those stories held on to them. I've still got them. I haven't looked at them in probably seven years. Um, they're not worth revision, I don't think. And this is a quote that is telling you, don't worry about it. You've got to write that anyway. But you've got to get past it. And you have to create other things. But next is a practice that I uh, employ in my craft, and I very much I very much think that everyone should because of the reasons that Hemingway outlines. Putting it in pencil, in addition to giving you an extra draft, makes you that much closer to every word. No matter how fast you write, you're thinking that much faster. So I guarantee you that one extra pass that you get between writing it to keyboarding it to uh, proofreading it, you get so many more reps on the word by word level by writing it out. I can't tell you how many scratch marks I have in my notebook because by the time I finish or half finish a word, I've got four other ones that I've gone through in my mind that lead to better places. And it is an invaluable practice, I believe, uh, at least for short stories and poems. It is a very cumbersome process, especially when you are working someplace full time, you have another job, you have other obligations to try to write novel sized pieces in by hand 
first and then keyboard them and then proof them. And op a lot of times you will be proofing them more than once. Um, especially, I think, with a longer piece. As you are racing through those things to get them done without forgetting what you're saying, oftentimes there is a cool down period afterwards where you realize what your piece was about. And that happens with short stories and with poems too, but it's a lot easier to go back and edit those than it is to uh, take on a 300-page a, a monstrosity that you've sort of meandered through and didn't really realize what it was you were talking about until afterwards. Um, but those three different sites at the thing, I think, is the main thrust of this quote. And again, seeing your own piece three different times is invaluable. Um, oftentimes, myself, what I will end up doing is, in a handwritten copy, there comes a point where, I, like I say, I've crossed through so many things halfway through a word or misspelled so many things because w one thing I'll do, one weird thing I'll do, um, say I'm writing imperfect and I say, no, this word should be flawed. I will write I-M-P-L-A-W-E-D. Um, and it, I don't ever catch it until I'm typing it. And then I've got to go back and, and make the decision, what was that word? Um, but it's possible to do that as well when you're keyboarding. And if you are uncareful, I think that it's easier to tell what word you were trying to get at in handwriting because the letters that you make are are so specific to your handwriting that sometimes you can finagle an answer out of it. Whereas if you've just typed it that way, sure there might be a red squiggly line underneath that you didn't notice while you were keyboarding, but you've got no idea what it was supposed to be because it is a Frankenstein of a word. But again, that second pass is as important as the first because you're gonna talk yourself out of a lot of bad ideas. And I will say that I think emotion is harder to redraft into a story than it is to put the first to put in in the first place. So writing by hand, I think, is a much better way to infuse your story with emotion because you were forced to physically, obviously when you're typing something, you're physically doing it as well. But there's a big difference between this and this. Um, you were forced to put those emotions directly into the piece uh, with your little didgeridoos. And I, I, that, so getting to the third pass, the, what does he call it, the copy, the proof. I, not something we necessarily have these days. Uh, unless you are so hipster that you're still composing onto a typewriter. But it's, you will still redraft. The, the way I've always done this is I write it by hand. That's one draft. Keyboard it is a revision. I print it out and then I'll mark it up with a pen like I do anyone's writing. And that is, at that point, when I keyboard those changes into my story it's normally pretty well where I need it and think it should be at that time. Um, but here we go one more time. When you start to write, you get all the kick and the reader gets none. So you might as well use a typewriter because it is that much easier and you will enjoy it that much more. After you learn to write, your whole object is to convey everything. Every sensation, sight, feeling, place, and emotion to the reader. To do this, you have to work over what you write. If you write with a pencil, you get three different sights at it to see it, to see if the reader is getting what you want him to. First you read it over, then when it's typed, you get another chance to improve it. And again in the proof. Writing it first in pencil gives you one third more chance to improve it. 
that is 333, which is a damn good average for a hitter. It also keeps it fluid longer so that you can be so that you can better it easier. Once again, that is Papa Ernest Hemingway from On Writing, as edited by Larry W. Phillips, and I hope to see you the next time we do another writer's quote.